and there is the synthesis of fundamental still here we will just discuss about the quantum mechanics and the introductory part about the nanomaterials with the applications and some fundamental problems or issues with the nanomaterials how we are able to procure in the market but anyway we will talk about the next topic and it is the synthesis of nanomaterials now what are the type of different type of nanomaterials when I, when I say it's a nanomaterial it may be in the form of colloids, maybe clusters, maybe powders, maybe tubes, roads, wires or thin films we will talk about the number of compounds but cluster, powder and tube, nanotube these are the most important ones which we will discuss in this part the synthesis techniques are basically, uh, mainly classified into four categories uh, and they are based on the process of uh, synthesis of material one is the synthesis, uh, physical method, the second one is the chemical method, third biological and fourth one is the bi hybrid which is the combination of the physical and chemical methods when we talk about the physical it is done by the mechanical alloying or by melt mixing or by vapor deposition or different type of depositions now this physical synthesis is further classified in two categories one is known as mechanical and the other one is the vapor when I say mechanical it is the mechanical alloying just like a floor wheel which is well known to everybody and uh, the principle of high energy power wheel is somehow you can compare with the Load wheels which are used in market and the second one is the right mixing again it is the same similar process where we will talk about the mixing through melting of the material so whatever compound we want to make in the nano size we melt them and then mix in presence or at high pressure and very high temperature the other method is the Weber technique or Weber method which is based on the deposition of thin film or deposition of the samples on the appropriate substrates when i say it's appropriate substrate where we want to mount the nanomaterials those things are explained by the different methods like physical vapor deposition then laser ablation spread, spreading and then electric R discharge or ion implementation the second one is the chemical method this is the most easier one and uh, this is easy to prepare uh, even in the laboratories as well in um, industries the only thing which is important in case of chemical is the process parameter when I say process parameter then what are the parameters which may change the properties of prepared nanomaterial that is the most important one to understand to explain and the chemical methods are mainly colloidal methods the solid method, inverse missiles, aluminum and the most easier one and important one is the co-precipitation which I will discuss later in the time then biological method which is uh, by default we say most of the biological samples, biological organs are in the size of nano or in the size of 1 to 100 nanometer like using biomembranes, DNA, enzyme and microorganism is also in the range of say few nanometers and the last one is a hybrid method which consists of physical and chemical and you know, this is the most important one because here we will talk about the different hypotheses to prepare the nano size samples the first one is the electrochemical the second one is the chemical vapor deposition, it's just like the physical vapor deposition but it is in the presence of sometimes chemicals or by the electrolysis and then particle arresting in glass or geolites which is also very similar to the melt mixing uh, geolites or polymer and then micro emulsion <coughs> the technique to be used depend upon the material of interest type of nanostructure whether it's a zero dimensional, one dimensional or two dimensional materials and what size we require as well the quantity of sample which we require as we discussed earlier also then the preparation techniques are classified in two categories one is a top down and the other one is a bottom of approach so what kind of approach we are using and how we want to synthesize the material and the most important one is what type of nanomaterials we want whether it is a 0D, 0D 2D, 1D or 3D nanostructures when I say these dimensional structures then first we choose the type of uh, synthesis method and the second one is the material size what size you are actually looking for whether it is the 1 to 10 nanometer 10 to 50 nanometer or 50 to 100 nanometer and the quantity whether you want in bulk or in just for a laboratory experiment purpose so depend on all these on the interest as well the requirement of our prepared sample we choose the technique the first technique as for the slide last slide the First technique used for the synthesis of nanomaterials is the physical methods, and one of them is high energy ball building. Remember, 
power being the milling or the mixing of material of the sample with in presence of ball, ball is maybe tungsten, maybe carbide, maybe steel balls. And the last word is the high energy. The RPM is very high, and in case of high energy ball, the number of parameters which we can control through our uh, the ball mill which we are using. It is the simplest way of making nanoparticles of some metals and alloys in the form of powder. Type of mill is planetary, is a vibratory, road or tunnel. So these are the different types which we are using to prepare the nano size sample. However, this is the most important word to making nanoparticle of some metal and alloys in the form of powder. When I say we, are, uh, we want some alloy with a particular composition, say NIX, CO, Y, or like that. In that case, this technique is most important. And if we are using high energy volume and it can run for 200 hours or 50 hours or 300 hours, and you get some nano sample. Now, this is the beauty of this high energy milling that without affecting any other parameter of the prepared sample we just get the nano size sample by ball milling at very high rate usually one or more containers are used at a time to make fine particle this is one easy example we are having the cylindrical box and cylindrical container and here are the balls and in between these balls we pour the powdered sample now when these balls rotated with very high speed around the horizontal axis and these are the partial filled with the material and we'll get the nano size samples. Remember, the duration for which we run this ball uh, building is most important and the balls, size of ball, ball to powder ratio, these are the important parameter. Now when I say when I say the what type of nano materials we want, then different materials are used as a media including ceramic balls, finite pebbles and stainless steel balls, including these you can add one more the carbide balls or tungsten balls. They are very costly but still they are used in the uh, research laboratories for the preparation of nano size sample. An internal cascading effect reduces the material to a fine, uh, fine powder. If you remember something called floor wheel. In case of floor wheel also nothing will happen. Simply a stone which is rotating about two different like these are the two stages which are rotating uh, about the horizontal axis and in result the grain may be wheat or um, maize are rubbed and ultimately with a fine powder. Same technique is used over here. The material to a fine powder in distilled powders can operate continuously, fed at one end and discharge at the other end. This is for the industrial and the, this you can uh, say this is a type of crusher which is used in the market for the raw making concrete and all those. Large to medium sized ball mills are, uh, are mechanically rotated on their axis but small one normally consists of cylindrically capped container that sits on two drive shafts pulley and bed are used to translate rotatory motion this is the easiest one and maybe cheapest one uh, costing around 10 to 12 lakh which when you simply it is system of boil, bed and pulley where you get the nano size samples aside from common ball mills there is a second type of ball mill called planetary ball mill planetary, planetary ball mills are smaller than common ball mill and mainly used in laboratory for grinding sample material down to very small size say uh, 2 to 4 nanometer or 10 nanometers a planetary ball mill consists of at least one grinding jar which is arranged eccentrically on a so called sun wheel the rotating body is known as a sun wheel and on that uh, grinding jar is mounted and in most of the cases we are using a cylindrical grinding jars the direction of movement of sun wheel is opposite to that of grinding jars and they are rotating in opposite direction in reserved we will get the uh, highest effect on the powdered sample due to balls and the rotation and in result will get the very small size uh, nanomaterials. The grinding balls and the grinding jars are subjected to superimposed rotational moments, the so called Coriolis forces. The difference in the speed between the ball and grinding jar produces an inter interaction between frictional and impact forces, which release high dynamic energies. <coughs> Interplay between these Forces produce a high and very effective degree of size uh, reduction of planetary warming. So, this is just like what I said earlier on also. The difference in speed as I change the speed as the ball wheel I have is having three different layers. One is the ball wheel, the second ball, second one is the jar, and third one is the pulley system or sun wheel. So, the ball and jar are moving with the different speeds, and if they are moving to the different speed, then the interaction of balls will with the powder sample will produce a high frictional and impact force and in result 
the energy which is released is reducing the particle size and we will get the unit size samples. This is the best way to understand what is the difference between volume and high energy volume. Here I am using simply these are the poles and this is the container whereas here it is the sun wheel then this is the container and this is the inner one is the ball goes with the powdered sample. Now, why we prefer high energy ball mill for laboratory purpose and even in case of industry? Here are some comparison between ball mill and high energy ball milling. The first one is the milling time. Uh, in case of ball milling, we can run it um, for less than one hour, whereas in case of high energy ball mill, we can run it continuously for 20 to 200 hours. I used one uh, high energy ball mill in my own laboratory and it can run to 18 uh, to 20 hours uh, after say every 10th minute break we can run it for 200 hours or 300 hours the second one is the impact energy which is 0.001 in case of power milling where it is a 0.1 which is a much higher than the impact energy in case of high energy power milling as compared to power milling the particle size which we can obtain in power milling is the micrometer whereas in case of high energy power milling is the micrometer but which are the clusters and when I say a cluster it means a group of nanoparticles when I remove all the particles and try to identify individual particles, they are in the range of few nanometers only. The structural changes in case of all will not occur it's simply mixing or maybe just fine grinding of the sample base. In case of high energy ball milling, you can get the structural changes, and those structural changes are responsible for the change in the composition of the material, and that composition gives the idea about the change in the <coughs> composition and in result to get the sum alloys. So whenever we look for the formation of alloy in nano size, we use the high energy model. The chemical reactions, yes, they occurs in case of high energy model and if oxidation or any other thing happens in case of high energy model, then the energy which is released due to the impact of balls with the jar and powder will control all those parameters. The next one is the atmosphere. In case of volume, we don't have any control on the atmosphere of the uh, material or inside the jar. Whereas in case of high energy volume, we can control the atmosphere of the material as well. We can control the temperature, which is approximately around 700 degrees Celsius. Whereas there is no control in case of volume. Now, what are the key properties of grinding media? Now, when I say the grinding media, it means uh, the powdered sample. Uh, along with the ball mill are both uh, put into jar and what are the parameters which affect the synthesis of the nano material, synthesis of nano size particles inside the grinding media or inside the jar. The first one is the size. The smaller the media particles, the smaller the particle size of the fine product. Like that, if I start with a uh, powder which is having size, size in micrometer and other one is a millimeter, then in case of micrometer, I'll get the nano size for, uh, particles room, whereas in case of melee, it takes a longer duration. Remember, it is possible to get the nano size particle even with the larger particle size, but it requires the longer duration to produce that. At the same time, the grinding media particles should be substantially larger than the largest piece of material to be ground. This is the important and easier one. When I say the grinding media particle means the bowl which we are using must be having size than the largest particle which is uh, powdered sample or which is the sample which we pour inside the jar. The density, the media should be denser than the material being ground. It becomes a problem if the grinding media floats on the top of the material to be ground. So it is just like what I said, we are using the powdered sample and the bowls which are of the conversion or carbide or steel are having more density than the grinding substance or grinding material. The hardness. As we say, the bowls are made up of steel or conduction or carbide, it means they are very hard. So here yeah, the grinding media needs to be durable enough to grind the material, but where possible, should not be so tough that it also be a the tumbler at a fast pace. And the second last one is the composition, which is the most important. Various grinding applications have special requirement, like uh, some of these requirements are based on the fact that some of the grinding media <coughs> will be in the finished product. Others are based on the media will gain with the material being ground. Here, like if I am preparing only a nano size sample of say copper or iron or gold nanoparticle, in that case I am not interested in what are the intermediate stages. Whereas in case of 
the alloys are interested in the composition as well as the size. So, in case of uh, wall building, the composition is also very important. Now, what are the important factors for wall building process? Or what are the important factors which affect the final product produced in the wall building process? The, as the first one is the wall to powder ratio. The wall to powder ratio must be 10 to 1. Means the material which we are using is uh, twice or is uh, half of the size of the walls or it must be lesser than the uh, total wall material. The second is the wall size. Larger, large, larger walls produce smaller size but larger defect in the particle. Now, it is suggestive to use the larger size walls in case of wall building but they produce larger defects in particle because when I say the, these two walls hit, they will hit for the larger area and if I use a smaller one, they will interact with the smaller one. It means in case of smaller walls, the surface area is smaller and in result it will produce lesser defects. Whereas in case of larger wall size, they produce the defect in the crystalline structure or defect in the particle and that's why generally will not use the largest uh, particle size. Whereas if I use a small particle size, sorry small pearl size, then I require a larger time or longer duration to produce the nano size particle. The third factor which is important for the uh, synthesis of the material is the grinding speed. There are number of um, grinding speeds are given in the volumes like uh, 1000 rpm or 2000 rpm or 300 rpm. So how much time you want to produce the nano size samples. So this factor is also an important duration of milling. Like if I made it for uh, 100 hours, it may produce 100 nanometer. But if I uh, run it for 400 hours, then I wait maybe 10 or 20 nanometers. So the duration of milling is an important parameter for the synthesis of nanometers. And the last one is the temperature during milling. How we control the temperature of all milling and what is the temperature of milling? And so if I say it, um, we are milling at the high temperature, in that case, what will happen? And the impact energy which is produced due to collision of ball powder with the container is increased by this temperature factor and it is going 3 kT. So, in that case, we will get the faster nanoparticles, but there may be possibility of ox oxidation of the material in that case. Now, next one is the melt mixing, it is the mechanical method only, and it is the easier one. It is possible to arrest nanoparticles in glass. Structurally, glass is an amorphous solid, lacking long range periodic element as well as symmetry element of atoms or molecules. When a liquid is cooled below certain temperature, it forms either a crystalline or amorphous solid. Just look over here. If I melt any substance below this one, so in case of fast cooling and slow cooling, will they get case transformation stage and Simply by arresting nanoparticles in glass medium or amorphous medium, we can produce the nano size samples. It is uh, almost similar to the melt mixing and uh, ball milling only. <coughs> Besides temperature, rate of cooling and nucleation formation tendency decide whether the metal can be cooled as glass or as crystalline solid with a long order. So this is what the fundamental of the melt mixing process. Usually metals from crystalline solid. But if cooled at very high rate, they can go among the solids and the such solids are known as metallic gases. As I said, the rate of cooling in case of uh, cooling of the material or solid crystalline solids may produce a stage which is known as metallic classes and in that case we get the nano size particles. Addition of elements like boron, phosphorus, silicon, etc. helps to keep the metallic classes in an amorphous state. Now, next one is that it is possible to form nanocrystal within metallic glasses. Like, uh, if I form a metallic material, metallic glass by just fast cooling in, uh, at high temperature, in that case, it is possible to arrest some of the nanocrystal within the metallic glasses and they produce the uh, nanomaterials. And this process is known as mild mixing because of the uh, fast cooling of the material at high temperature. It is possible to form some nanoparticle by mixing the molten stream of metals at high velocity with the double lens. The best example of the metal mixing is the, the molten stream of copper boron and molten stream of uh, titanium formed nanoparticle of TIB2. This is the easiest one and the most important one component formed with the metal mixing. The next technique used for the um, synthesis of nanoparticles is the electro deposition technique. Now, when I say electro deposition, it is well known to everybody that the electro deposition is the deposition of material 
on the electrode in presence of electricity or in presence of electric current is known as electrode position technically this is known maybe 200 or 3 years before the first one in 18th century Faraday given the electrode position method and he explained what is the meaning of electrode position and based on that it is possible to produce nano size samples or nano size materials using this technique which is known as electrode position technique now what are the advantages why we talk about electrode position like um, bone milling is the process which may be used to produce nano size samples in longer duration but they are um, formed in the form of alloys whereas in electrode position technique is the one which will produce the pure nanoparticles like pure copper, pure gold, pure and silver nanoparticle. Now, what are the important advantages or what are the advantages of this technique? Number one, the low processing temperature minimizes the interdiffusion. When I say low temperature means the process parameter which is important in all the chemical techniques or the technique where we are using chemical is the temperature. And if I run it, if I prepare it at a very low temperature, then the interdiffusion possibility is minimized and in that case will get the pure material. The second one is the control on film thickness by monitoring coulombs. Suppose we are building the uh, thin film using this electro deposition technique that we can control the thickness of the film which is deposited on the substrate or deposited on the electrode by controlling or by monitoring coulombs means by controlling the electric current through the material. The third one is the composition and defect chemistry are controlled potential statistically. In this case, the composition of material and the defect capacitance will be short to defect, maybe uh, defect in the crystalline structure are controlled potential statistically means here by giving the voltage and the statistically means the motion of the charge area will control composition and defect chemistry. Films can be deposited as complex shapes. Uh, can be deposited whereas uh, some other activities uh, are over here. Drying force is precisely controlled by the applied potential technique is quite inexpensive because here we don't want too much things about this technique. And the last one is that current time transients provides an simple measure of the deposit process. Now, when we talk about the electron deposition technique, it is classified into four categories. The various approaches used for the nano phase depositions in the first one is that the growth in nanometer. The whole process can be collected in Nano beaker and that nano beaker made up of what you say the glass material and here we are using the electrode which may control that you can control the property of the material. The second one is the scanning of nano lithography. In this case, we can uh, produce or we can deposit the silver nano pillars of the electrodes. The third one is the architectural growth of the quantum loads, cadmium, salarium are the produced through this technique and in situ studies of the architectural growth of the material on the electrodes, these are the different nano based deposition techniques. Now, the other application of electrode deposition technique are we can produce the nano composites which are the bulk samples, but they also deposited on the uh, electrodes. The next technique which is based on the evaporation, we will just talk about the fundamental of the uh, evaporation technique and how we can produce the nano uh, synthesis or nano materials using this technique. There are a variety of methods to form nano structure by operating the material on substrate, some substrates. Remember, the substrate is the most important thing. If we want to operate the gold or silver or any other nano particle, then this is the substrate, like maybe glass, maybe silicon, maybe any other material. There are several methods in which the material of interest is brought in the gaseous phase, atom or molecule, which can form cluster and then deposit on appropriate substrate. So it is the technique which is completely based on the operation of material and in this case we can produce a thin layer, very thin layer or multi-layer of the nanomaterials on the appropriate substrate which we are using. Now in this case if we go for the process of the operation then it is very simple that you put this arm sample in a medium, in a maybe in a uh, uh, what is a crucible or anywhere and that material is heated with a very high temperature maybe 1000 degree, maybe 1200, maybe 1300 degree Celsius and that evaporated the solid substance is deposited on the substrate which may be a glass film, which may be a what is a silicon or any other substrate where we want to deposit the thin film of 
given material. So it is very easy to understand and easy to learn that uh, evaporation method. In case of evaporation method, it is um, we can do the resistive heating, electron beam heating, or laser heating, or sputtering. Now, what are these? These are the four techniques which used to evaporate the sample. Remember, this is, these are not the evaporation technique. This is the simply technique by which we evaporate the sample from its solid or liquid form. This whole synthesis process should be carried out in a vacuum system to avoid the oxidation of the source material and the final products. The mean free of free path also increases in vacuum system. When I say it's vacuum system, it means there is no other particle apart from the given sample. So the mean free path increases and if it increases, then it is easy to deposit them atom by atom or layer by layer. Material to be operated are heated from some suitable filament, crucible or pot. These are heat pots are now. Now, when we say we want to heat the material, then how we can do that? Usually the sources are electrically heated so that enough vapor of material to be deposited are generated. If the material to be deposited weights the filament material without forming any alloy, these two lines are most important for the electro deposition, sorry, for the operation method. If material to be deposited weights the filament material without forming any alloy or compound, the filament is considered to be suitable. Now if it doesn't make any compound, any alloy, the substrate where we are heating or the operated material goes and uh, deposited, then we say that is the best suitable filament to be used for the operation. Otherwise, the melting is done in basket or canoe. At this method, as the drawback that the crucible itself and surrounding itself is heated, it's source of unwanted contamination or impurity. Suppose I use a crucible for <coughs> basket or canoe. In that case, if we heat it through the external agent, then crucible, the environment, and the sample, all three will heat and it may produce some contamination or impurities in the final product. So, this is not desired in our pure sample preparation. Third and the last case where we talk about the operation with the easiest technique that is known as electron beam heating. It requires very low temperature or sorry, very high temperature in vacuum but still it is the best one to produce uh, to be operated sample. In this case, the operation by electron beam heating is desired. Electron beam focus on the material to be deposited, kept in the crucible. It hits only the central portion of the crucible where actually the sample is placed and that sample is heated. It means the crucible will not hit and in result will get the pure vapors of the given sample and in result the reposition takes place only for the pure sample. Now this method gives the high purity materials. This is the best way, like this is the sample which is required to be heated like this, these, these are the different type of crystals which we are using for the heating of the material and the rotation rate sorry, is depend on this equation and this defines the rate of the operation of the material. It is necessary that a material to be operated creates a pressure of 10 power 3 tor or more to ensure adequate vapor pressure for particle synthesis. Before this, we said that is, uh, operation is important. Now when we say the operation is done, uh, with the help of electron field gun, we need to control the temperature as well as the pressure of the medium and that temperature is approximately 10 to 3 tor or more to synthesize the particle by particle or atom by atom or molecule by molecule synthesis. Materials like titanium, molybdenum, iron, silicon etc. have larger vapor pressure at a temperature much below their melting point and can be easily operated or sublimated from their solids. So at low pressure it is possible to produce the nanomaterial or nano size samples by operation and even at the very low temperature. Metals like gold, silver, etc. have very low vapor pressure, even close to their, their melting points, they need to be melted and obtain adequate vapor pressure required for synthesis. So, here we need to control the vapor pressure externally. There may be some difficulties in operating colors. And for a compound, the suitable method may be spurter deposition. This spurter deposition is another technique to produce the uh, nanosynth materials or nanosynthesis on the substrates. The next one is the physical vapor deposition. And this technique involves the material for uh, it's very easy to explain. By application of some external heat, you can deposit the material on the required substrate. An inert case or reactive case for collision of material vapor, the cold finger, 
the scraper and the stanovel. These are the things which required in the synthesis of nanomaterial using the physical vapor deposition technique. And in this technique, we produce alloys and as well the pure materials. All the processes are carried out in the vacuum chamber. Usually, metal or high vapor pressure metal oxides are evaporated or sublimated from the filaments. Of course, this is the container. Here is a loop. This is a scraper. This is the cold finger which um, used to deposit the material. This is the funnel where we are putting the sample which needs to be operated, and these are the crucibles. So when we heat the system in the presence of vacuum, it is solid. And it is uh, process is done in presence of liquid and to cool, and when it is heated up, it deposited on this scraper or this cold finger, and then it is removed through the scraper. Next one is an anized beam uh, cluster beam deposition. These are the different deposition techniques which are used for the deposition of material on the different substrates. So, if you want to just go through it, then skeptical laser vaporization, and last one is expert deposition, DN, DC, and R of spelling. So, these are the different techniques which you want. You can go through the slides and complete it. The next and last technique which uh, we we'll discuss over here for the synthesis of nanomaterials are the uh, chemical technique and chemical techniques or chemical methods. And uh, I'll just talk about two. One is the co-precipitation and so on, which are almost similar to each other. What are the prime requisites for obtaining good quality nanomaterials? When I say the good quality of nanomaterials, that means I need to control the, all the parameters of the nanomaterial as well I try to get the desired composition with the size and how pure that material is. So these are the important things which we require for preparation or for the synthesis of nanomaterials. Now what are the prime requisites? The first one is the variation of pH. Remember whenever I say the chemical method or chemical method or any other method used for the synthesis, for every method the synthesis parameters or process parameters are important to produce the nanosample. So, in case of chemical method, first one is the variation of pH is an important parameter which affect the uh, particle size of the final product. The second one is the temperature, the annealing temperature as well the mixing temperature. These two are the important temperature conditions which we need to look for the preparation of nanomaterial. Then time, how much time we are giving for the annealing as well any other thing. Next is the concentration of reagent like uh, how much Reagent is used for the uh, what you say for the preparation of the copper and all those. Like uh, I use copper separation technique with the 30 percent of the ammonia to produce the copper separated form of the copper zinc ferrets. Then the concentration of fertilizer, water and silica, or phase transition from soil to gel and drying at what temperature we are drying the sample. These are the prerequisites for the uh, chemical synthesis of nanomaterials. Now, earlier methods where we talk about like wall mail and the open, uh, chemical vapor deposition, physical vapor deposition, well mixing, all, that, all those are the part of top to bottom. Means we start with the larger size particle and produce very small amount. So that approach is known as top down approach. Whereas in case of uh, chemical synthesis, we we'll talk about the bottom up approach. Means we starting with the very small size particles and micro material, and then we are moving towards the higher sizes. Most common techniques used for the liquid phase synthesis, the first one is the co-precipitation, second one is the solid processing, third one is the hydrothermal or solothermal synthesis, then microemulsion, microemulsion synthesis, these are the different techniques which includes in the chemical method. Now what is the co-precipitation? The process is very easy, it is totally based on the nucleation, growth, poisoning and agglomeration process, means we start with these some compounds, like uh, I use the ferric nitrate, um, cobalt chloride, zinc chloride, and nickel chloride, and mix them in the appropriate proportion. In presence of ammonia or some other reagent, we make the sample and we got the co-precipitate. By continuous drilling to get the co-precipitation, then drying and all those, and we get the nanosized samples. So, what is the meaning and what is the co-precipitation technique? Say this is the technique which is the easiest one. The most important part of this one is the easiest and cheapest one. Co-precipitation. Uh, what is the co-precipitation? That the reaction involves the simultaneous occurrence of nucleation, growth, coarsening, or 
agglomeration process. The co-preservation reactions exhibit the following characteristics which are the most important one. The first one is the product are generally in soluble species form under condition of high super saturation. By using chemicals like uh, reagent or catalyst, we are making super saturated solutions and which produce the co-precipitate. Next one is the nucleation is a key step and a large number of small particles will be formed in the process of co-precipitation. Third, the secondary process such as Oswald ripening and aggregation dramatically affect the size, morphology and properties of the product. So whenever we talk about the co-precipitation technique, the process parameters are the most important and they will affect each and every property of material. Even the annealing at different temperature. One day I anneal at 300, next day if I anneal at the 350, the properties are changed. So, whenever we talk about the cough precipitation, the hospital ripening, application, or the, all other physical conditions are very important. The super saturation condition necessary to induce precipitation are usually the result of a chemical reaction, just like this one. X a y plus x plus plus y b x one x one that use the h b y then simply we are using some compound of a and b like the iron nitrate and zinc chloride when we combine these two I get something which is which may be like zinc uh, what is it zinc ferrite maybe cobalt ferrite maybe nickel ferrite so this is the easy one the typical composition in synthetic metal is first metal formed from aqueous by reaction of molecular precursors, uh, I used the ammonia as a precursor to get the metals from the its, uh, nitrate and chlorides. Micro solution uh, by reduction from non aqueous solution, electrochemical reduction, and decomposition of uh, <coughs> metal organic precursors. So, in presence of precursors, what we do it is reduced into form of a say OH or oxide form, and these OH or oxide forms co precipitate is dried in presence of some form in, in absence of air in a furnace and in dissolved with the required uh, composition of the material. Oxides forms from aqueous and non aqueous solutions, and the last one is the metal chalcomides formed microwave uh, sonication or associated co precipitation. By this, we can get the nano size samples. Next one is the solid technique technology for nanoparticles or fabrication. It is again the co precipitation technique where we talk about the formation of solution and the uh, semi solute form, which is known as gel, and ultimately we will get the powdered form of the sample. Now, material processing by soldier method, the introduction of this method is important, and remember, this is the most important technique which is used nowadays in research laboratories to produce nano size samples. The soldier process is very long known since the late 1800s. The versatility of the technique has been rediscovered in the early 1970s when glasses were produced without high temperature melting process. Solgel is a chemical solution process used to make ceramic and glass material in the form of thin film, fiber, or powder. This is the beauty of Solgel technique. So we can get the film, fiber, or powder. <coughs> now, what is the meaning of sol and gel? A sol is colloidal, the dispersed phase is so small that gravitational force do not exist. <coughs> in case of this type of colloidal, only moderable forces exist and they change the surface property of the material. And because of that, we got the solution form or semi solid form of the material. Molecular suspension of solid particles or ions in a solvent, and the last one is the gel. A gel is a semi rigid mass that forms when solvent from the soil begins to evaporate and the particle of ions that then begin to join together in a continuous network and that will form the nano size sample. Soil gel processing. This is all about soil gel processing in one slide. The soil gel process is a very chemical technique that uses either a chemical solution, soil short from the solution in slide. It is all about the method of the soil gel technique. Soil short from solution or colloidal particle solved from the nanoscale particle to produce an integrated network which is known as the gel. The second step is Metal alcohol, um, generally we use the metal alkoxide or metal chlorides, uh, artificial precursors. They undergo hydrolysis and polycondensation reaction to form a colloid which is either uh, OH form or O form, means oxide or hydroxide form. To form a colloid, a system composed of nanoparticles dispersed in a solvent, the sole 
evolves then toward the formation of an endocrine continuous network containing a liquid phase which is known as gel. So the first one is the salt part, second one is the gel part and third is the formation of metal oxide as I said either O form or OH form. So the formation of metal oxide involves connecting the metal centers with oxo and OM or hydroxo and OHM bridges. These bridges form either metal oxo or metal hydroxo polymers in the solution and ultimately after drying the process, drying process for these polymers will get the uh, nano size powders. After a drying process the liquid phase is removed from the gel then a thermal treatment calcination which is simply drying in furnace at 100 degrees Celsius may be performed in order to favor further polycondensation and enhance mechanical properties. This is all about the soil gel technique. The easier version is here. Hydrolysis to get SiOR where R is the ethyl group and Si is the silica plus HOS will give SiOH and RH. This SiOH with HOSI produce SiOSI in silica, metal oxide or metal hydroxide. These are the various forms uh, included in this sample. The general mechanism, as I explained already, that how it forms the oxo and metal uh, hydroxo forms and prepare the sample. Now, what are the factors which control the structure of these oxo polymer? The first one is the hydrolysis ratio, which is known as H. The second one is the use of catalysts, as we know, the catalysts are the most important whenever we talk about the chemical reactions. The steric hindrance of alkoxy group, the nature of solvent and the temperature, these are the important parameters for the uh, soil gel technique. This is how we can understand all about the soil gel technique. We start with the soil, means the solution, the semi metal form, solid, semi solid form which is the gel. When this gel is dried, we will get a dried gel and after grinding this dried gel, we will get a powder sample or by stepping we will get the uh, final and product which is known as a nanoparticle or nanomaterials. This is all about the soil gel technique. Now, what are the advantages of soil gel technique? As I said, it is very easy to produce uh, the nano samples by using this technique which is the soil gel. The first one is that can produce thin point coating to provide accident adhesion between the metallic substrate and the top coatings. Uh, by producing thin film, it can be used for the different type of films with the different properties. Second, can produce thick coating to provide corrosion protection performance. Here, metallic substrates are used for the, like in, in case of uh, gold coating, we require the thinnest layer of gold on any other material. That can be done by soil gel technique. Whereas, in some cases, we want the thick coating, like in case of corrosion, we require the thick coating of the material. That can be done by this technique and it is very easy. Now, can easily shape material into complex geometry in a gel state. Next one is they can produce high purity products because the organometallic precursors of the desired ceramic oxide can be mixed and produce the required composition of the material. And the last one is the centric capability is very good and it is and not only at the 200 to 600 degrees Celsius for the prepared sample. This is all about the solar techniques and some more advantages of this technique. This is all about the synthesis methods of the nanomaterials.